OK, good afternoon. Uh, I'm Mike Branch. I'm a hardware engineer at Google. Uh, I'm joined uh, this afternoon by Nilesh Datani from Microsoft. And we're here to talk to you about DCXPI. Uh, this is the data center ready extended peripheral interface. Uh, you might have seen mention of it in various talks here and there uh, throughout the day. Uh, but we'll give you a little bit more of an overview here and, and uh, provide a little more info. Um, so CMOX right here. Two years ago, he introduced us to uh, the concept of a modular building block architecture for a server uh, at OCP 2019. Uh, it had several pieces. This is kind of evolved to this modular hardware system that we've been talking about all day. Uh, one of the pieces of this is the I.O. and accelerator add-in card modules. And that's what we're talking about today. Uh, this has really evolved into this uh, DCMIO piece of the architecture. So again, this slide you've probably seen several times today, maybe. <laughs> uh, this is a modular hardware system. Uh, and these are some of the main components that we're calling out. Uh, so we have the DCSCM that we've heard a lot about uh, just now, uh, the HPM, which is the host processor module, or MOBO, uh, the DCMIO, which is the modular I.O., and the smart NIC. So we're going to talk about the DCMIO piece here, and we're going to talk about DCXPI in particular as one interface for DC modular I.O. So why are we doing this? Uh, some of the challenges that we've been seeing and trends at Google uh, are that uh, interface speeds, we all know, are, are increasing. Uh, the PCIe generations march on with uh, higher and higher speeds, requiring more and more expensive materials on our motherboards uh, and or retimers uh, to make those systems work. Uh, we're also seeing higher power peripherals. Uh, for example, a smart NIC. Uh, might be one example, uh, or an, uh, an accelerator perhaps, uh, and we'd like to be able to support those and support those in a, in a serviceable way, uh, in an easy way, try to eliminate cables uh, and so forth. Uh, also we're seeing a number, uh, the number of peripheral shapes that we're putting into our servers uh, grow at a fast rate. Uh, Many years ago, uh, everything was a PCIe card, <laughs> and now that's definitely not the case. We see lots of new form factors for storage and acceleration, uh, and uh, we wanted to be able to support those uh, more easily and mix and match those, and also keep the door open for custom form factors as well. Uh, we, wanted to, uh, we wanted to pay as we go for uh, peripherals. So in other words, we didn't want to burden the motherboard cost with all the potential peripherals that we might put in a server. We wanted to minimize the cost for the lightly loaded configs, and we wanted to be able to uh, add cost only as we need it as we add new peripherals or load up a server with peripherals for a specific configuration. Uh, and then lastly, as we've heard several times today, we are seeing a lot of new server platforms, a lot of new different shapes, new different CPU vendors, uh, we're seeing a lot more platforms that we have to validate, and we're trying to minimize uh, the validation effort and time to validate those platforms. So again, along the, the lines of modularity, having smaller pieces to, uh, to validate. Uh, sorry. Uh, so how does modular I.O. Uh, address these, these trends and challenges? Um, the basic idea is that we uh, put a, we separate the I.O. from the, from the HB, uh, HPM, the host processor module. Uh, so uh, we put a uh, high speed, small uh, connector, smallish connector, uh, near the CPU, where the runs are very short to that connector from the CPU. And then we use I.O. adapters to adapt whatever peripheral we want to install into the machine to the HPM. And that can help uh, on cost reduction in a couple ways, uh, it reduces the motherboard size. We heard this also on DCSCM, right? Get, get the size of the HPM, which is a very expensive uh, motherboard real estate, get the size of that HPM down. Uh, it can also uh, eliminate the need for retimers by using cabled I.O. adapters. So the architecture really allows uh, riser style or cabled style I.O. adapters. Um, so you can use 
uh, whichever one's appropriate for your application. Uh, if you're doing a very high speed application, especially with a longer run, uh, you could use a cable adap cabled adapter and that may uh, eliminate the need for a retimer for you. Uh, as I mentioned before, this approach uh, lets us adapt with this I.O. adapter to really any form factor uh, that we want that can fit physically in the box. Uh, and so that's a, a big advantage. And we can install it as we need them. Uh, we'll show you some pictures in a minute and maybe it'll all make a little more sense. Um, but also the tray config, not only can we add them as we need them, but we can also mix and match. So it's very flexible, uh, at, at least in some prototypes. Uh, the one I'll show you a picture of in a minute, you can see that we can configure our I.O. very flexibly. We can break up the front. We can mix and match all these different form factors kind of in any way we'd like. Uh, I'm going to hand it over to Nilesh. Thank you. So thanks, Mike. Uh, so <clears throat> we talked about the DCMIO uh, as a concept to as as a, as a bigger scheme of things in, within DCMHS uh, universe, um, and DCMIO is a concept. And in that concept, today we are introducing one implementation of DCMIO, we're calling it DCXPI. And we had certain problems with whatever you know, Mike mentioned, similar, similar at Microsoft as well. And some of the goals we were, like some of the problems we are trying to solve are, are, are mentioned here. We're looking for high density connector, we don't want to increase the footprint of the connector on the motherboard. We also want a connector which is in use and in high volume across the community. Um, and we want more power, we want more configurability in terms of form factors um, and, and flexibility in terms of pay as you go, um, what we can connect to the connector. At the same time, we want something which is standardized so that we can use that across systems when we talk with our partners, they know what we are talking about. So these are some of the implementation goals uh, for, for DCXPI 1.0. And the implementation is, is right here. So OCP has embraced the, the TA1002 4C plus connector in other implementations. So that was a connector which met all our requirements. Um, very high volumes already supported by ecosystem. Um, and does allow for cable risers and all the form factors. Um, and as I said, extra power, so we targeted 150 watts, which, which allows for two standard cam connectors. Uh, and then that seemed like a good goal to have, so provides even further flexibility into having two by eights or by 16. Um, and manageability is the big aspect of, of, of this DCXPI. We wanted multiple interfaces in addition to what is supported by other standards. The, the, we'll walk to the, 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 the slide where we are talking about the spec. Spec has a good comparison uh, between uh, different existing standards and DCXPI. So some of the interfaces you know, uh, to Microsoft, which were really interesting and useful, were USBs and I2Cs uh, for the um, load which goes into the DCXPI. This is very interesting slide, one of my favorites. Why new? People don't like new, we have so many. We have OCP NIC, we have DC SCM, this DCXPI. So we did a very comprehensive study and, and, and uh, you know, these are some of the uh, shortcomings of, of existing connectors. Um, some of them were like, yeah, the, the manageability aspect is missing. We don't have USB and UART to the connectors and power. Um, so. This is one of the features of TCXPI. You can support up to 150 watts and beyond with a power block that we'll just uh, talk into. Um, this is, uh, so just, just going back a slide for a second. Um, the, okay, let, let me see. So here, this is the Microsoft implementation. This is real, this is happening. Um, I, I, this was presented the demo, we just took it out. Um, but we have pictures here. Um, and, and uh, it is real in the current uh, generation at Microsoft. Um, and Mike will probably talk about 
what we what, what has been happening at Google with the DCXPI. Uh, here's another uh, example of a server. This is a prototype server uh, at Google uh, where we've implemented all the I.O. Uh, in this server in, in uh, using DCXPI. Uh, so you can see here, uh, there's, there's a better picture of it in the next, next slide. There's, there's eight DCXPI connectors going across the front of the motherboard. And you can see that the HPM, the, the motherboard, if you will, is pulled way back from the front, uh, making a, a smaller motherboard. Uh, and then we've taken that whole front volume of the server, this is a front I.O. server, uh, and we've divided it up into four uh, I.O. bays. Uh, we'll get a closer look at that here in a second. Uh, you can also see a note, we have a DCSEM uh, vertical form factor uh, card here on the, on the left side. Uh, here's a top view of the same server. Uh, and in this one, we can see um, uh, there's some red arrows here, uh, left to right. Well, I guess we have the DCSCM. Uh, you can see some of the adapters that we happen to have in this server. Uh, on the left, we have a 1 by 16 PCIe Chem uh, low profile uh, adapter. Uh, and then we have a 2 by 8 Chem uh, cabled adapter. Uh, and then I think there's another one by 16 way over on the right. Um, and you can see uh, the DCXPI connectors uh, a little bit easier now on the front of the motherboard. And let's see what else you can see here. Uh, DCXPI has uh, 150 watt native uh, support uh, for, for power delivery, uh, but it does have a optional uh, expansion, power expansion connector that you can add in front, it's a separate connector in front and in line with the DCXPI connector. Uh, and you can see on the slot uh, over to the right that has arrows pointing at it, PE6, uh, that it has the optional power connector in front of it. There's a kind of a, a, a layout view over on the right showing the, the 4C plus connector and the uh, optional power connector that's in front of it. That brings the total delivery uh, capability of DCXPI up to 400 watts if you have a higher than 150 watt uh, peripheral. Uh, one last picture, and this is of a I.O. adapter module. Uh, this is just the module out uh, on the table, you know, tabletop by itself. So this is a, a two by one, uh, two, there's two by 16 chem connector uh, I.O. adapters in this I.O. module. So this, is, this would encompass one of those bays, one of the four bays in the front of the server uh, and give you two by 16 chem. Uh, Status-wise, uh, the 1.0 spec is, is, is pretty baked, uh, and we have uh, products going out in 2022 uh, from Microsoft and Google using the DCXPI 1.0 spec. Uh, similar to SCM 1.0, uh, we're going to contribute those to, to uh, Open Compute, and we will start working on a 2.0 spec where we will uh, open it up and get a lot more collaboration for any tweaks we want to make to the 1.0 spec uh, to make it even more useful uh, for the whole ecosystem. Uh, we're targeting that 2.0 spec for our 2023 uh, servers and beyond, uh, and we're trying to time it with the release of DCSCM 2.0 uh, so that those two specs kind of stay in sync and we can build systems kind of on you know, modularity 1.0 and modularity 2.0, if you will. And then uh, just a quick call to action is to, uh, yeah, we're building this stuff. It's real. Uh, you should consider building with this as well. Uh, and please get involved in the 2.0 spec when those, when those uh, uh, talks start. And just another plug for DCSCM 2.0 that we heard about. Uh, please get involved there because that one's uh, equally important and a, and a little more complicated. It needs a lot of uh, industry involvement to make it work. And I believe that's all we have. Thank you very much.